the, is it possible to switch between the current topic and the, the open you, topic? You, you may negotiate. I want the uh, the G zero nine software. But it's all about G zero nine. Open, no, this one. See me to this. Okay, that's good. And what about share experience on the <laughs> Gaussian and Cicas? We can add it. If you want number nine, we just add it to cover what oh, both of them? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Come on, this is, this is very easy stuff. So, um, how much time do you have? Three or two minutes more? Yes. Um, you have more papers? Okay. You have seen that there, there are many slides. But some of them are repetition and review of what we did before. So, um, in some sense, this uh, meeting is the uh, main one in the uh, chapter. We uh, are focusing on the electronic degrees uh, of freedom. And we assume that ions are. Uh, nucleus are nailed down and we look only on the opening structure. The last night in the lab, uh, you practiced uh, analyzing energies of molecular orbitals, and you already know that uh, there is an output in the software that gives the total energy, which is uh, philosophically the main goal. Find total energy of the molecule. Orbitals are auxiliary uh, concepts, but they really help you in analyzing properties uh, of materials. And uh, you were also drawing molecular orbits. We do have all the ground information to actually do cardiac theory today. All other things were building blocks, and now we, we can put them together in a, a, a little house. Um, oops, this is a plan from uh, last year, and um, we will. Do not worry, presentations are not on Tuesday, they will be on Thursday. <coughs> and on uh, Tuesday, we will do uh, Hoffman's theorem, which is uh, a little decoration of it. It helps how to interpret it. So, I will discuss and summarize what we'll be doing in the way language, and then we'll go through the details. There are three types of output from, from Carter Fox theory. Total energy, orbitals, energy, and orbitals as distribution systems. We do, um, we have all concepts that help us to get them. Like anti-symmetry, variational principle, but we need to look at actual equations that are being solved in the, in the brain of the computer. Um, <coughs> you already got the idea that um, wave function of uh, this modular term system is composed as anti-symmetric product of molecular orbitals, and molecular orbitals are composed as superpositions of atomic orbitals, like hydrogen uh, S and B. And uh, we also got the one electron uh, fork, which was actually the equation that has traces of mean field of interaction of one electron is the ground um, propulsion from other electrons. And these equations were cast in the abstract form for three dimensional distributions of, of this one electron. These uh, three dimensional shapes that we draw as, as orbitals are still not very comfortable for computer process. Because there are several standard procedures for which uh, one has a very quick optimized subroutines routines that can be parallelized. And uh, the goal of a programmer is to reduce whatever mathematical problem to one of the standard algorithms, like a search, a steepness descent, and uh, about fully dimensional surface or diagonalizing a matrix. 
So there are also propagation of differential equations, but in some sense, there are limited amount of uh, solvable numerical problems. And we are going to recast one electron of equation in a basis of atomic orbitals. If you do this, if you recast it in a basis of atomic orbitals, you will avoid these three-dimensional shapes, which are still, they are doing the work to get the computer, but they are not complex. And instead of the three-dimensional distributions, as you see in all of your orbitals, in actual calculations, computer deals with expansion coefficients, with which percentage, with which proportion, atomic orbital enters into a specific molecular orbital. And if we convert everything we did into the language of this linear combination coefficients, we will use that of C. Then it will be actual equations that are being solved. So instead of three functions, we, we need numbers, special coefficients, which we will say in the form of vectors. And equations that are being solved will be formulated as diagonalizing matrix. You can formulate a matrix, formulate a vector of expansion coefficients, and then uh, to analyze how it is connected to what we were doing. Any objections on how this idea? So you, you've got some differential equations, you, you are applying this concept of basis functions and representing any function as expanding to this, right? And then and, and, uh, you will take it as it goes. It's not the R right? It's a solution, right? It's, it's a way to numerical solution. Numerical solution. And uh, it will be iterative because uh, I will explain it later. It's, uh, Important but separately. separately. This uh, diagonalization will be repeated in a cycle wise, same as you were so using. You mean the basis function should be fit to the answer? Or Not basis functions. Basis functions are once and forever, but expansion coefficients can be fit. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. there is constants in the series. So. Right, and you can tweak this concept until you get the right solution. Good? This, uh, this uh, uh, expensive coefficient we are getting from the eigenstates. Right? right, exactly, exactly. Yes. Um, so basically, you got the idea, and I will return to it several times. These are shorter, shorter uh, summary slide, and then with all the relations. The uh, relations are not our goal, but I will put a few mandated to show, even if you don't care. Uh, so, what will be the main step in the derivation? So we already have equation for this um, analytical continuously distributed functions. And I, we need to get expansion coefficients. In order to get rid of wave function, one needs to apply orthogonality property. Because if one multiply wave function with uh, another wave function and integrate, they will convert into delta function. We already did it when we uh, were going over Born in Hammer approximation. Remember? Maybe you remember that. <laughs> but uh, this is a standard uh, trick in derived equations. If you practice it, you need to get an analytical to uh, matrix form equations, just to the switch form, and you use uh, orthogonality problem. So this is how you were born. Is uh, now I will replace open matrix and uh, make a little bracket. Yeah. And we have to show a little bit more. Give us a chance to show this kind of So uh, we are uh, going to get two summary uh, slides to at the end of the meeting if uh, you will survive this program. If I survive, and i this material. So those. And we will go careful about the meaning of, of, of each symbol. So this C vector is the column of expansion coefficients for a molecular orbital number i. F is one electron co operator which replaces the neutronium as traces of uh, electron electron interaction. E sub i are energies of uh, molecular orbitals that you are already analyzing in homework and using for density of states. 
So this is least of energy because uh, eigenstate equations have many solutions. Uh, this is again unknown vector that we need to solve, and S is overlap matrix because the atomic basis is not always orthogonal. And uh, as in linear algebra, if one needs to solve such uh, equation, one uh, pulls everything to one side, removes uh, unknown vector, and finds determinant of matrix. Right? So if you agree with this writing, basically you the rest will be. Uh, another that one starts with positions, with row models. Then in order to launch, one needs some even arbitrary expansion coefficient. And then these arbitrary coefficients one formulates for of methods for this diagonalization, makes make diagonalization and uh, computes so one box list computes total energy, it computes new expansion coefficients. Then expansion coefficients are used to reformulate all the methods, to solve the diagonalization, and compute energy once again. So if the total energy at each step of this cycle will converge to a small, uh, uh, this less and less deviation, change will be under some tolerance limit, it's considered that uh, it's converged, that one can go to compute observables, both of this, that analyzed get, or orbitals, or some, some other stuff. Why, uh, where this cycle comes from, why it is needed? One of the linear eigenvalue problem Uh, is a linear procedure. You solve it and you get answers. Although it is like set of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, you just do it at once. And there is no ambiguity. There are um, so many solutions, but they are, in some sense, deterministic. But it is one elephant problem. And the uh, force, the potential of interacting with the rest of the electrons, is non linear. So in some sense, we are solving non-linear problem of many electrons. And if when we do it once, expansion coefficient will be different and force acting on electrons will be different. And uh, this, in some, we are solving non-linear problem. There is no standard algorithm for diagonalizing non-linear problem. So one needs to do this uh, optimization, like I said, or people call it self consistent So until forces Elephants and energies will become agreeing to each other, will be consistent, independent of how many times you cycle, then the solution is approximate solution that can help. If you hate this uh, nonlinear problem, then you are welcome to solve true multi electron problem, which would be your number 10 to the 22 or small etc. Several of orders of magnitude more complexity, so it, it, it is a reasonable price to solve non linear instead of linear to, uh, to access a quicker, substantially quicker solution. So, this is the end of the hard work. But usually, the result should be an average from different from the independent initial configuration or no. For instance, may this model be trapped in the local minimum of optimization or not? It happens. And uh, the uh, many pieces of software like Gaussian start to handle it. Telling that probably this uh, electronic structure fluid model cannot be converged. Probably it's a bad model. So maybe, for instance, for each rod, if you have a randomized initial configuration, each rod may give you a Different minimum. It, it, it is uh, trapped in a local minimum. For instance, if one product owner people try to mm -hmm. run five simulations and get the average with the error bar for the results. So, so um, 
you are setting up a very strong question, which is a central question of uh, modern computational chemistry. Kartikov theory is designed in uh, like almost 100 years ago. But you taught very important work, configuration. So you probably were projecting an analogy with molecular nuclear configuration. And here we are coming for electronic configurations. Configuration is the same. We want to minimize the maybe potential energy surface. Exactly, potential energy surface, but before our nucleus are now fixed. We do not change nucleus. We are browsed in the space instead of coordinates. We have expansion position. It's quite abstract. But all Hartikov theory uses concept of slate determinant, and it rests on the on the assumption that there is only one slate determinant at one point. But it is not necessary. If uh, there are some electronic uh, configurations, so-called triplets. When there are coexisting three determinants, and for them, uh, like you, you, you do numerical experiment, your Gaussian software panics tells you gave me wrong problem. It has no solution. I'm I'm frustrated. Stop stop. Uh, and we in the drop down menu you have several methods, and you just uh, get more uh, higher order methods so that you're not panicking. Solve the problem, maybe for like 100 times longer uh, investment of computer resources. So, molecular Schrodinger equation with all degrees of freedom does not have ambiguities. It is solved, so it is always solved. But this approximate method can't get stuck. You, you, are, you are very correct. So, the Hardikov theory only uses the new function of the electron and electron uh, cloud. Uh, and uh, exchange interaction. So it, it, it is it is a good theory, but it yeah. uh, neglects uh, multi-determinant nature of uh, that is op often happens for um, unpaired spin for excited states. Uh, so it, it's um, it's a good starting point if you if you really need to, to model something like that. Yeah. It is well, just like you showed us this. It's calculating the energy, just taking the only electron outside mm -hmm. and putting them back mm -hmm. and forth and mm -hmm. uh, taking the other electron mm -hmm. uh, as a function of uh, 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 what is it? As a, I don't know, I don't know why. Um, superposition. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll probably we do not have time for review. I'll just quickly skim through. Uh, Slater determinant, function, uh, one with function variation principle. This is important. Uh, I was drawing it on the blackboard yesterday, and uh, this is atomic expansion coefficients, and there is a set of s, p, d orbitals on each ion, center of each ion. So we need to make summation over ion and over a set of uh, uh, quantum numbers. And then all of this, like set of quantum numbers on one ion, set of quantum numbers on another ion, set of quantum numbers on another ion, and we add all of them together. This is expansion coefficient. And for each molecular orbital, homo, woman, and others, we will have index of this molecular orbital. But we want, instead of drawing molecular orbital, searching for molecular orbital as function of Cartesian coordinates, we want to solve equation for this C coefficients. It's something that we will use. And this uh, molecular orbitals as function of Cartesian, uh, it is what you were doing yesterday in the cube files. Change. One of the exchange. And now we actually start. So, um, 
Hartman was um, it's, it's Wikipedia about him. So he was trying to address things about uh, multiple architecture, and he decided that if there are many electrons, then it has to separate variables and considerably function of many electrons as a product of one electron. And he had an interesting career of using it to develop some computers. So he uh, developed this idea of uh, Winfield theory and going over cycle. But after people started to craft this uh, hypothesis, this theory, one was, see, one was observing substantial deviation from experimental results. So it was a cool theory, but for some reason it was um, we, um, Vladimir Fock contributed an idea to take anti-symmetry concept into the Hartree uh, methodology. So it was very little addition, like to prolong at exchange, basically. But then, since exchange had minus sign, it stabilizes, it predicts that most molecules will be stable. And uh, I was able Taking the uh, undergraduate class from uh, the former graduate student of Fox. So, uh, just a uh, half a year before he passed away. So, because of the connection. He didn't understand much of it, but it was an encouragement. So, we are going to work on this uh, extension predictions. So, Raju, you originally elected to talk a little bit about this, and then I asked you to give it a little more. So, basis set, to, um, to what we talked by now, it is a set of atomic orbitals. But atomic orbitals are very bad in mathematical sense. Uh, why they are The mathematical expression for S orbital looks like I skipped normalization e to the power absolute value of position of electron minus position of so if one draws this uh, function, if you have a cusp, right? So exponential decreases if it goes to the left and to the right for the, for the special form. And on this cusp, the derivative will be infinite. Great. Those non-analytical functions for discontinuity derivatives are a big pain for, for real calculations. And um, if one replaces this function by by function that looks almost the same way on the edges. In the center, this little continuous shape. One will get very minimal error for any interatomic uh, overlaps, but all overlaps, all uh, multi electron integrals, all matrix elements will be computed without, without trouble. So, why? The software that you're practicing is called Gauss. Yes. Because atomic orbitals are replaced by Gaussian functions. Okay? So it was a, there, there is no uh, philosophical discovery in this, but it was major, what do you say, software engineering discovery. So as soon as uh, people did it, uh, one was able to before before the strip it was not possible to do anything. It was like well one can um, be a 
expansion of arbitrary function in a certain basis. Is possible? Wait, wait, wait. Is possible if the basis is complete, right? Yeah. And if you replace one complete basis to another complete basis, the theorem will not suffer. We can represent the same function through any representation of a basis if the basis is complete. So in some sense, it doesn't matter which functions we use. It, it, there, are, there are mathematical theorems that one can any complete basis will be sufficient to represent function. And uh, we use our chemical synthetic intuition because uh, the basis functions in, uh, in this software look like atomic polynomials, but they are not atomic polynomials. They are modified in order to be comfortable for uh, certain uh, mathematical procedures. So, but do you think the basis function is reversed? Yes. Yes. And um, let me continue with some bit of illustrations. So, if you um, have the S function on the position R2 in the same function for this side, right? If you have a P function, R1, then it will be zero all the way at this point, and then it will decrease. So it is kind of one-dimensional representation of uh, ESP over there. And um, anywhere where we have E minus absolute value of distance, E in Gaussian it will be square. And there are some additional tricks. And there is a big nomenclature. One can uh, dedicate uh, him or herself to the basis function for the whole life. And if you look through some drop-down menu, there will be like uh, STO, uh, like a simple superposition of uh, those numbers. And there, there will be a no nomenclature of uh, uh, 631G. And uh, I do not want to waste our class a lot of time, but you can look and just bring uh, how to open this nomenclature. And it will be deeper in this drop down menu, you go, be more precise, more complete. Is set is and more uh, perfect for the calculation speed. But this is a story about atomic centered basis, which was traditional, which was a traditional um, approach for computational chemistry for like uh, the whole 20th century or maybe until the last decade of the century. When I was thinking that computation in chemistry is for like water molecule, benzene molecule, maybe uh, aspirin, some, some molecule. But at some point, I decided like, what if we need solid states and non-structures? The, the main property of solid states is that they are infinite in a sense of micro world. If you look on few atoms, there are repeating unit sets. And atomically centered basis functions are not ideal there. So in week and a half from now, we'll start new software, new uh, chapter, and uh, we will focus on a different philosophy of basis. Right now, well, there is a theorem that um, function can be represented in a basis, in any complete basis. But we are using at atomic like functions centered on atoms. But there, no one forbids to use brain waves, like infinite periodically oscillating function. Same like in Fourier series. To represent molecular order. And this is the most um, useful way for solid state for nanostructure. And in a week and a half uh, from now, we will focus our attention to it. Yeah, just show how the process is. 
So in the so orbital and all um, atomic orbitals and in index of uh, of the new pressure. So once again, we offer the rate. kinetic energy of first electron, attraction of first electron to all nucleus, and then uh, repulsion of the uh, first electron from all but one uh, electrons, and attraction to the rest of the electrons through exchange mechanism. We do to reformulate this uh, abstract in, in a moderator spread of either in abstract space or in continuous discrete space. Uh, in, in, a continuous, uh, in a continuous space, we need to reformulate it in the um, discrete space of expansion function. When you were doing a summary of today's lecture, expected uh, outcome, you have seen the letter S. Right? If you look through this, um, can you will see this letter S uh, um, on the equations 3.136. And uh, the last equation on the last page, you see this uh, eigenstate equation with this uh, S symbol. So, there are the dis this discussion continues our view on basis functions. If we select basis functions as plane waves, as uh, infinite exponentials, oscillating exponentials, or sines and cosines, then these sort of basis functions are orthogonal to the definitions which are, right? Oscillating functions of different frequencies are orthogonal to each other. It's a uh, background of Fourier series. But atomic functions, they are orthogonal to each other only if they are on the same end. But if you have uh, two S functions on one atom and another atom, you multiply with them, you integrate, and the result will be non-zero. So atomic orbitals originating from different atoms are not orthogonal. So we still have a complete basis set. But it is not a, it is complete but not orthogonal. And this okay. S Yes, yes. Just repeat it again. We need to get rid of, of wave functions, atomic wave functions. Yes. We, need, we need all the expansion conditions. In order to get rid of continuous functions, we need to practice orthogonality. We need to like integrate one, another oh, basis okay. function, and then they disappear. So there will be either delta function is 0, 1, or matrix 7. And typically, if the basis set is good quantum basis, all basis functions are expected to be orthogonal. So if we have atomic function with one set of quantum number, numbers and uh, atomic function with another set of quantum numbers, multiply, integrate, we get zero. If it is the same number, we'll get one. But if these atomic functions are sitting on different atoms, they will be not orthogonal. It will be neither zero nor, nor one. It will be something in the middle. In different levels. Yes. So we need a measure. We need to quantify how much this uh, atomic bases are not orthogonal. And this uh, S object is a measure. Is a measure uh, for this non orthogonal. Let's say S orbital on one atom, P orbital on another one, and in this region they will be interacting and providing something between zero and one for the integration. So function one, function two, integration variable is the same, but they are um, evaluated at atom one, atom two. 
So this uh, S mu nu is degree of non orthogonality of the basis functions. We, uh, if you take calculation of sparse helium gas between stars, where all atoms are very far from each other, then this term can be neglected. But if it is something dense with chemical bonds, when atoms approach close to each other, the error associated with uh, this non orthogonality can be substantial. So uh, one needs to foresee this uh, feature and uh, take care of it. You already know how to deal with bonding exchange. This is the reason for the carbon uh, just your orbitalization. Huh? This this is the reason of carbon uh, sp orbital uh, hybridization. It is it is related to it. Yes. But uh, hybridization is how this S and P orbitals come into into hybridized, how they are superimposed in molecular orbital. They're saying that. So this is what we have now. And in this equation, you want to get rid of, of the orbital as function of position. Yes. Okay. Now if you uh, if you were relaxing, leaning back, and not focusing at this time, uh, let's focus briefly right now. And then you can relax further if you need. So we are going to use expansion of molecular orbital in basis of atomic orbitals. Let me come up with some. And we are going to plug in this expansion instead of molecular orbital here and there. From now on, we will have no molecular orbitals, but only atomic orbitals and expansion coefficients. Okay? And in order to keep expansion coefficients and delete atomic orbitals, we will need to practice orthogonality of whatever we have instead. So we will need to multiply by another atomic orbital and integrate. If you want Object, object now. Just stay silent forever. Focus, focus. Huh? focus, focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no it, it's a different thing. It's not focus, focus. It's, it, it's uh, orthogonality. We are practicing orthogonality to get rid of uh, atomic functions. Okay. I, I better. Write it to attract more attention. So we do have that, which is that. And here, instead of wave function, I'm a summation of all quantum numbers. C, D, I, D. And I, I will die if I will write the explicit corresponding plot. Then it can be done. Equals energy set i. Summation mu c mu h i. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I want to practice the following property integral of chi mu. Uh, 
James Craig. Equals it, it will be not delta function as, as the may one, but it will be s mu mu. Let's just assume that uh, index of uh, ion is stored in this big super index mu. Either, otherwise, it will be too too many writing. So when we do have two wave functions, two atomic wave functions. We can convert them into this uh, S matrix. And S matrix is uh, is not a function; it's a set of numbers in, in the matrix. We already have one way function here and there, but we are missing another one. So, in order to practice this uh, idea, we need to write here integral d r i u star, and here we also need integral. Okay. It's not forbidden to multiply both parts of the Now, the expansion coefficients, they are not operators, they are not functions. So one can put this expansion coefficients and this summation up front. Okay? So we can swap the uh, multipliers. Oh. If, so yes, this constant, it, it is allowed. With quantum objects, not always. So let's put this stuff. And now we write what uh, There were no uh, dirty tricks. Everything is okay. Now, we know that this combination can be replaced by this S matrix. Right? And this combination is um, conversion of abstract operation into set of matrix elements. So for each value, for each set of uh, coefficients mu, and for each set of coefficients mu, this will be one number. So instead of Koch operator, we will call it Koch matrix. Okay? And this one we call S. Right? So if you look onto the uh, last line of the last equation, it should be very similar to this. So summation, C coefficient of matrix equals energy, summation, S matrix, C coefficient. Okay? 
I'm going to do a few more slides just wrapping it up in a more comfortable way. But basically, it was the core of the hardware box theory. This is equation if you, if you formulate the spot matrix and S matrix. This is equation that computers are trained to solve. There are standards several times that do it like step. So we need to, if it's supposed that we live on the inhabited island, we design our own computer. We want and we want to write a hard of theory for it. We can do only part of formulating this equation because diagonalizing a matrix uh, is a natural thing that anyone can do. It's computer we will do it properly. We will utilize um, background created by other uh, applied mathematicians and programmers. Or it is the same thing you just typed. But I don't know, maybe you prefer uh, nice typing. I, I think when, when someone writes, it's uh, a little better uh, to formulate the matrix. So we plug in the conjugated wave function to the left and to the right. Uh, and use that. Uh, Atomic functions are not orthogonal, but they are orthogonality or non orthogonality is uh, stored in the form of this matrix. And by plugging it in, we are getting four matrix from panels of negative and wide. I don't know why you need so many slides, you know what the idea is, right? So summation, fork matrix, expansion coefficients, uh, S matrix, expansion coefficients. Now, if those are matrices and conductors, why do we use this uh, summation and we, why do we write so many indices? If you look on this equation, you recognize this, this same thing. Last 20 slides were just in this case. So summation matrix, first index, second index, and then vector is another index. And this index is coincide is row by column. So this can be considered as a column vector. Same here. Row by column. This is vector, this is not. So you can, um, you can represent this uh, object. And uh, by the way, I want to give credit to uh, Professor Yanis Rukhan, who has uh, designed this conversion of Hartz of Fork abstract theory into equations that can be solved on the computer. And uh, in the Wikipedia, that he got uh, his uh, inspiration and idea while uh, sitting in the water. This confused. So, if this set of expansion coefficients is a vector for each molecular orbital, there is a, a set of uh, atom, individual atomic orbitals, and we write it as a vector. Then, in the same approach, we can. Uh, write this folk matrix as a matrix, S matrix as a, as a matrix, right? And then uh, the uh, Cartier-Folk-Gordon equation will move this way. Matrix, vector, eigenvalue, matrix, vector, right? If we would try to solve maybe H2 molecular hydrogen problem is a lot of painful effort a human can do. But it's much better to trust the computer to solve these equations. And if one needs to diagonalize uh, a matrix, uh, you will have a familiar object. You subtract it uh, left and right so that you give each element 
here when it's undoing hydrogen energy and second hydrogen. And then uh, this unknown, this known method multiplied by unknown uh, vector equals uh, zero, which will be satisfied if the determinant of this matrix is zero. And then this uh, determinant uh, converts into polynomial, which will come to its this looks to be if I hate writing many indices, I can use both symbol for matrix, vector symbol for vector, and then this will be the problem of the application. And if I need to find this uh, eigenvalues, it will determine this subtraction. That will be the set of molecular positive eigen energies we were using the word positive states in, uh, in the last part. And as we discussed at the beginning, this equation is solved in a cyclewise fashion again and again because as soon as you find expansion coefficients, they are used backwards to reformulate uh, both metrics, and one needs to repeat this uh, procedure. Thank you for your dedication to the bus. Um, please expect some emails maybe tomorrow or on Tuesday. Uh, this um, materials from previous years. And there is a little homework uh, that you may enjoy of uh, making these good states. But main task is to prepare presentations for the questions. The about, um, I will cover whatever is not covered towards presentations in uh, uh, Wednesday and Wednesday evening. And on Wednesday uh, night, uh, midnight, I'm expecting, I'm asking you to send me the PowerPoint so that we have them uploaded here next week and we will see next week. Okay, thank you. Have a nice weekend. Uh, that's I'll stay question. here and answer any questions. Not about this lecture. Uh, <coughs> through this course, we really go to learn fast VAS. Yes, absolutely. Okay, what's the pronunciation of VAS or VAS plus? Okay. It's a uh, Vienna Abinitia simulation package. Okay. So we use this software for the projects? We will use VASP for the projects. Thank you. Ah. I will do it. Yeah, okay.